I'm Mr. Wilson from TCP Academy at tcp-academy.teachable.com. That's where you can find us on the internet. Today we're looking at collecting organisms and we're going to be going through a number of ways in which this can be done. Objectives are we're going to be looking at types of ecosystem, collecting organisms, and of course, the video to follow, we're going to be looking at sampling techniques. Types of habitat. First, the habitat where refers to wherever an organism lives or is found. So your habitat is going to be either aquatic or terrestrial. For aquatic environment, this would include fresh water like rivers and some ponds, saline water, maybe sea or some lakes. We have brackish water, which is found pretty much in estuary. That is usually where the river meets the sea. Then there is terrestrial, which refers to habitat that is on land. And of course, those that are related to tree on land, we refer to them as arboreal. And on land itself, of course, that's where we'll have some organism live. Here we have four types of habitat. Can you identify them? Great. Estuary, lake, river, and of course the sea. All are four types of habitat. Collecting organisms. Organisms should not be armed, neither should you collect more than is needed. Now, collecting organisms for study can be done using several different methods. And these include use of Uta, use of pitfall traps, tall grain funnels, bottles, jars, nets, sweep net, plankton net, seal. Now, all of which are very, very important in our study doing biology or environmental studies. Now, bottles and jars are pretty much useful when you're looking at things like the tall grain funnel, the puta, the pitfall trap. We're going to be seeing all that in this presentation. Let's look at the a puta is a small jar with two tubes attached to the lid or at the lid. And these come from commercially made puta to some which are made at home or at school. The short tube goes into the mouth and is used to suck the organism into the jar. So it has two tubes, one is much longer than the other. So we hold this instrument in our hand, and of course, the shorter tube will be in the mouth, and the longer tube placed in the proximity of the organism to be collected. A mesh is at the end of this tube to prevent things from entering the mouth of the individual. Now, the other tube, which is a longer tube, is used to collect the organisms like ants due to the suction force that is applied. So when you suck there, it is going to be pulling onto the ant and of course collecting in your jar. The tube allows us to collect those organisms in small spaces. The bottle is held in the hand when it is being used. So you might be collecting from within a tree, under a tree bark, under stone, uh, from a little uh, cavity in the soil, uh, but we have to be very careful. A uh, good thing about this is that the tube that we are pulling, uh, that tube has a mesh at the end, or one would say Muslim. The puta collects arthropod without hurting them, and this is, of course, very small arthropod. Most often collected are our insects, and particularly the ants is usually the popular 
mechanism collected in a pool. Now, this gives us a simple setup of a pool that we are in the long tube here, pretty much in the vicinity of the organism to be collected, and the rubber tube collecting the organisms. And of course, we're seeing another rubber tube, which is a shorter tube, which is going to the mouth of the individual. Air is sucked in this tube, so you find that the air is moving this direction and uh, causing a pool from here into the bottle. We're seeing the muslim here, and this is, of course, a small collection. So here, the muslim uh, pretty much is uh, like a mesh, or you could be a, use a mesh or some other material so as to prevent the organism from going into the mold. Let's look at what happens. So there we have a pull, uh, a ear being pulled into the mouth, and you are seeing the ant there moving in. We're seeing some ants crawling into that area that we're pulling the ant from. If you observe carefully on your screen, there we go again, pull air, and we find another organism coming in. And as long as we do so, and the tube is over or close to the organism, we're going to be having effect an organism it's better to take a sharp uh, pull in than to take a long slow pull a sharp pull will be more effective in getting the organisms into the jar very go pull air in and you'll see the organism moving into the jar okay. and we do so again same is true we keep pulling until we get the number of organisms that we are looking for to collect. It's not so easy sometimes to collect these organisms without doing, uh, using the, 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 the puja to do so. You might hurt yourself or the organism. I really don't want to hurt any organism throughout this process. Now, the top of a puja is usually with uh, either a cover that is put on or a bone that is placed in and the tube. We're seeing all the parts here in label just to remind us go show very quickly of what happens air is all pulled in and as the air is pulled in the organisms are collected in the jar that's the presentation on using the puta it was brought to you by tcp academy teachable Reach us at extreme solution ja at gmail.com. And we're going to be looking at another method of collecting organism. So this question appeared on the CSEC 2015 paper, and it was about the puta apparatus is more suitable for collecting. Is it ants, slug, moths, or spider? Go back to your video and see if you can get the answer. For this 2015. We're going to be looking at the pitfall trap. Now this is you to collect small crawling organisms on the ground, especially things like spider, slug, beetle, that type of a thing. The trap is made from a jar buried on the ground with the top of a jar level with the surface of the soil. It is covered with a flat stone or stick elevated above the jar just to provide enough space to allow the invertebrates to crawl under and into the jar. The jar must be checked regularly to ensure accurate count and to prevent the organisms, of course, from being eaten. And you really don't want that to happen because you might be carrying out your sample for quite a while if you allow that to happen. So this is the setup. You're seeing the jar there on the ground. You're seeing the stone there that is used to hold that piece of stick covering the bottle. And um, it's pretty much an elevated covering just to allow the organisms to crawl under and into the jar. Uh, we're seeing the forest floor there and we're seeing the ground that the cavity there that is created for the jar to collect the organism. We look at organism as they move across the surface into the bottle there we have an organism moving in under the stick in they are not that's not really their intent they are moving across the forest floor to find food water made shelter and in so doing they would have fell into a pitfall trap 
as it is called. So that's not their objective to get into this trap, but they have been in search of something to ensure that all is well within uh, their population. And like we say, it could be anything from biotic to abiotic uh, factors to enhance their life. That Remember, that's what really determines where organisms are found with adequate space, adequate food, adequate water, adequate shelter. There is no predation, no disease. All those, uh, the temperature is right, the humidity is right, the water, uh, salt content, all that is right. So organisms continue to move. So as they move, uh, what you find happening, they tend to go to food and retreat. They can find what they are looking for. And in so doing, they fall uh, prey to this trap. So you're seeing the organisms there being created in the jar move across the forest floor and into what we can use for food. So if you look at this here, you're seeing the organism being collected and nice and so for us to carry out our samples. We must always take care when we are doing samples like these not to be stung or to be beaten by any of these organisms and also to protect the organism from us. The other thing we want to look at is the sweep net. And this is used to collect insects and other small animal forms. Uh, you might have seen uh, the sweep net in use. Uh, it's used in bushes, long grass, shallow water. And it's also used to catch flying uh, organisms like butterfly. So it is used uh, swiftly, uh, just sweeping it two sides as we walk through the habitat and we collect organisms in the net after which they, it is pretty much collected in a jar or a bottle, whether we're using it in the air, the water, or on land. That's pretty much how the net is used. I will enhance this video with another video showing you the use of the sweet net. Now, parts of the sweep net, the sweep net has the handle, that is the stick area here. It has this metal frame here for which the, the net is pretty much attached to. So a metal ring here and, of course, the net. And there are some persons who would go fishing with a sweep net uh, just in order to enhance that, that effectiveness of getting the fish out of the water of the hook. They were seen also used to catch flying organisms that's not, that are not moving so fast and so high like the butterflies. Now, collecting butterflies with the sweep net, you would find persons running across uh, habitat, uh, moving pretty much behind the butterfly, trying to get the butterflies in that net, so as to make sure that we can look at the organism, that we're going to be classifying the organism based on similarities or differences, are looking at role in the particular habitat. So it's very, very important to collect these organisms as they tell you so much about what is happening in the habitat. And of course, you'll be able to predict things that might happen in the future. Here we have the sweep net being used by a number of persons uh, to do different things. We are seeing it uh, pretty much associated with the watery environment here, but also be reminded that it is used on land to collect organism, not only the use of net uh, for marine sampling. You're seeing their nets being thrown. And to collect organism, it gives you a good feel, a good idea as to what is happening in your water body, what organisms are there, what organisms are in danger, what organisms are likely to become endangered. It also gives you a good uh, idea of organisms that might be introduced to the water at particular time. Very, very important that we do this type of investigation so as to make sure that our ecosystem is well protected. Then we have the plankton net. And one might wonder what is the plankton. Now, we have two types we talk about popularly at the CXC level. We have the phytoplankton and zooplankton. Now, the phytoplankton refers to microscopic plants, and in some cases, you're going to be seeing them at the base of your food web or at the start of your food chain. Then we're going to be having the zooplankton, which are microscopic animals. Now, to deal with these organisms, they are usually found in aquatic environment. A trawl is used to collect them. So you're seeing a net here, 
and at the end there is a jar that is used to lick the organism so just a jar here at the end and this here is tucked through the water column usually by a boat so we have a trawl and it goes pretty much right across the water a boat in the right across collecting the organism here in the net and pretty much jar where we can collect and do our sample of the patient analysis so on and so forth to provide feedback and make valid decision for our ecosystem then we're going to be looking at the tolerant funnel which is should be the final method we're going to be looking at as to ways in which we collect organisms. The tolerant funnel is used to collect small organisms from the soil or from soil sample or leaf litter. Usually it is friable or loose soil that we are collecting these organisms from. The sample is placed in the funnel and a light bulb turn on over the sample. Usually there is a reflecting surface around this white bulb that helps push that heat light in the direction of the sample the light bulb provides heat and light energy this causes soil organism to move away from the light and down the funnel one would understand that the light and the heat would cause pretty much desiccation or drying out of these organisms and in most cases these organisms are trying to find dark moist place with adequate food to live so the light and the E does not provide that sort of a thing. So in their quest to move away, they tend to fall in this bottle or jar that we are able to collect and sample. The organism finally are collected in the collecting jar for observation, which are usually contains water or alcohol in order to neutralize these organisms. The setup of a tolgan funnel is as is seen in the diagram here. There we have the light all turned on. And once the light is all turned on, we know that once the soil there or leaf litter get heated, what is going to happen? We're going to be finding the organism moving. So you're seeing the light there blinking as the organisms are now are feeling the effect of this heat energy is emitted from the light bulb. Uh, the surface is a surface that is reflecting the light energy and heat energy onto these organisms and you find they are now getting a little uncomfortable. So they start moving down the, the funnel and of course they are falling into that liquid there in the container. So we are seeing it moving there. Let's speed it up just a little bit just to show you what is going to happen if you observe closely you're going to see these organisms moving one at a time as they might not be uh, pretty much uh, uh, their ability to withstand this heat uh, light might vary based on variation so that is something for us to look at probably the skin color probably the texture that affects our impact how long we can stay in such arid condition so we have the soil and leaf litter there we had a funnel and of course we have a collecting jar with alcohol and water and you in the light source with a reflecting surface and the, there's a mesh there right below the litter so as to prevent the litter or soil from falling, falling into the jar. That pretty much provides the information we wanted to share with you today. I am Mr. Wilson from TCP Academy. You can find us on the internet at tcp-academy.teachable.com or you can find us on YouTube at CSEC Biology TCP. We have just presented Methods of Collecting Organisms Produced by ECP Academy. Watching.